Oh, ladies and gentlemen, March 22nd, 2021. It is a little late. This move is, this is not easy to record. Something for what I've stored, it's not even going to do me good. You can have time and date right here, March 22nd, 2021, time locally here. Um, but I'm going to do it anyways. Because eventually I think that all this adds up together. And I don't think it's worth it for me to do anything I do without doing the whole thing. Because from my point of view, there is much more at stake than just um, what somebody would want me to see as money. You know, what's to some money is to others time, whatever they have left out of life. It depends where they are from, and foremost, I think, where we are all heading. It all depends what money is, to whom, what. And so, I decided to reply on what I those of you in Britain, I don't know, what he likes the soccer or whatever, I don't follow what he does. This is one of the first people, he is now worth 15 billion dollars, involved in MK Ultra, this guy here. This, this dude here. This. Um, 95, this was like, really very, very, very important associate of Vladimir Putin. Extremely, extremely important associate of Vladimir Putin. Another associate of Vladimir Putin in 1995 was Mr. Colbin. It's his name is Piotr Colbin. This dude, this guy here, this guy was very, very important. This guy. This was like his financial. This was like a guy that would take chance. This was like the guy that would have balls to travel to Switzerland and deal with the criminal stuff. Stuff that was risky. Roman Abramovich probably assisted, had a lot to do with it. Israel. Vladimir Putin, however, or I should say his ring of mafia, looked forward to get rid of Israel. Israel because the first dealings that Vladimir Putin did, the circle of Vladimir Putin did, and that's something you can get introduction through um, right here, also that's not going to state here. Uh, Navalny is not going to state that kind of stuff. Israel charged a commission in transaction in the laundry when they laundered the money through the deals that were really, really shady otherwise. If considering like international laws and stuff like that, Israel got them done. They managed to get through the Israel stuff done. The money was leaking into this circle in Moscow, literally through the Israel. However, it costed a lot of money because it was a high risk, because it was dangerous. Um, I assume it was a lot of liability involving it. They had to pay a high commission. And so Vladimir Putin was interested in Switzerland, and in 1995, this guy already experimented, this Piotr Kolbin already experimented before and have done like a small transactions before, like two he said in 95 he did, 
yeah, I am the man who knows what he's talking about. In 1995, it was the first time among these politicians, and that's when I really understood that maybe I'm not in so much damn danger. That he managed to complete like a really, really considerable transaction, something that like gave a lot of belief, faith uh, in their circle. They, they, these people understood that they are dealing with really like heads, like top state people. Uh, this transactions got completed, and the only thing that happened was it was smile on their face which did not last it for too long. And the same thing happened in the year 1996. Or three, it might have been even more that happened. And sometimes since 1998, this man became like a permanently assigned to the Switzerland. He would deal with all kinds of transactions in Switzerland. He became like assigned. The Swiss post would become like his permanent. He would be the laundromat, laundry man lower commissions, much lower commissions, and deals straight with the West. Extremely, extremely lucrative deals. It was like a completely like a jackpot for the circle of people of Vladimir Putin. That's that mafia, that KGB, the ex-military, uh, and even people involved in the presidential stuff and so on. All, all kinds of people, uh, government people that found themselves in this failed system, um, they were taking advantage of whatever was left out or run out of these scraps um, to get as much as possible, basically. And so now the money from the West, basically a connection, the fresh cash from the outside in a stable currency and so on, that was like the thing that boosted Vladimir Putin in a circle of people in Moscow. Because Moscow, this is like a place where everything is, at least was everything was decided. So these are two people that I would say like a key people for Vladimir Putin. You don't even know. Um, I can tell you that even Abramovich, Abramovich is still alive. Abramovich is still alive. You know, Vladimir Putin knows when I say Abramovich is still alive. He knows exactly what I mean by that. If you did what Abramovich did, and you would have already gone, you would have been gone already, you would disappear. They would make you disappear. It's just as simple as this. It was all kinds of stuff. Some of the guys did. They did maybe only once. They didn't even made it twice or three times something like that but it was for about a lot of money that was also lost they would run in all directions and sites but um oftentimes in waiting for nothing they the, this mafia this gangster this circle they would caught up with them somehow and they formed a country that was based completely on on a mafia, they, they formed a completely, completely mafia state, a completely gangster state, like everything was run by the gangsters, everything, everything, like totally everything. Now, what's really interesting about all this stuff, when I say they did this, and they did that, and they did, I don't know what they did. Angela Merkel, and my surprise, that was kind of shock to me. I already started in 96, and in 97, and in 98, they started to feed me with information about Vladimir Putin's whereabouts from the past in Eastern Germany, about his KGB career in Germany about his apartment building when he would stay. They would, they would bitch me what I have to remember. They would just give me a whole dossier and start talking about 
that's going to be very important that I have to memorize this and this and this and this and this and this and this. That way we go back to uh, Alexei Navalny, who also appeared in 96. Also not with a picture with the Germans yet. I had those files before he was on a picture with them. He pictures himself on a picture with the files sometimes in, you know, sometimes, and you can see this in this movie, sometimes for the first time, like in 2002, 2003, with this German guy, exactly with that guy, exactly with this guy. That building I'm talking about, that archive, I can describe one, because I can see it, what it looks like, the building. There were three guys. I remember the people since 96, when they brought me in there. I think that eventually they did like a little change to that building. If you would demonstrate me the building, if I would see the building, I could maybe even tell what exactly, but I think one corner or something of the building, they changed something. Angela Merkel said to me that the guy that you see on the video, you're not going to be able to prove. She was unstable. She had moments in between, if you understand me. One time she saw it, uh, she saw it like this. Another time she saw it like that. It uh, kind of depended depend on wind, whichever way it blew. If it really blew at her hand, uh, what the hell was mine, she saw it a uh, completely other way. But she was very meticulous about it, and regardless, they would keep updating me with the stuff. They would keep filling my head with the stuff that... I said to myself, F you, what the hell am I going to do that stuff for? For what? What do you think? You're really going to play some kind of stuff like this? I'm not going to be doing this kind of stuff. I said to myself, just dream about that stuff. That's not going to happen. Eh? But as the time went by and I saw the kind of people, boy, it, it, it's, it's, it's just for me, for my, from my point of view, that meant like more and more trouble for me, like more and more difficult to escape all this. With what? As I, if I repeat again, I, I never wanted to have anything to do with it. Absolutely didn't want to have anything to do with this, any of it. 98, 99, the first time I met this guy that you see with it from the German archive on this video. What's his name? David something. Um, he sits with Navalny and give him a dossier and stuff like that. And with Navalny sometimes in 2002, 2003, and then Merkel claimed, um, in meanwhile she claimed me, no, 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 you're not going to be able to, this is, is going to be, this is the guy that's going to be transferred to this apartment, he's going to be new in 99, something like this. Um, and then she changed her mind again, like in 2005 or something, again, that, that you're not going to forget, that you're not going to forget, like that's why I'm saying that one time she saw it like this, she had a moments in between. She was not certain about, just about as about this movie and so on. They, in general, wanted me to think, what am I gonna say and this and that. They wanted me to basically turn myself in the same form as they have this uh, Russian state option known as Alexei Navalny. Basically, pretty much see it in the way they want and da 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 yeah I'm afraid that's not possible they both have a big blame in this case they both bear guilt in it for what have happened to me personally and for what have happened to many other people along the way And a six second already of this video, and this is really something that uh, this is where I, it really, really prompted me. And then, then I saw also here Navalny went. He, he didn't waste time into year '96 and into '98 and this and that. I don't know. Maybe he motivated me with '96, with '99 when he talked about 
uh, Putin spending time in Switzerland um, his wife spending time in meanwhile in, on a Baltic Sea and Putin spending time in um, in France, in Cannes, and stuff like that. Uh, he maybe he wanted to motivate me when he said to me that I would not be capable to prove that ever he was in Slovenia and this and that, because he documented everything so meticulously that he recorded for everything when the Putin came, where the Putin was, and this and that. You know, I think he wanted to motivate me. I think there is a lot of good material from my point of view that I see in Navalny uh, but there are certain things in the end of this video I will discuss why they bother me uh, it's like this in a second six Navalny is discussing about Angela Merkel about the hospital uh, how he was poisoned and how he went to Germany and assisted was was assisted in Germany and what's that's something really really interesting he suggests even that because of the um, psychological profiling that people like uh, Putin do and they then translate this to the public uh, he decided to, despite the risk of becoming arrested, he decided to return, despite all this, back to the Russia and tra 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 tra. First of all, I was with Navalny in this hospital, with Angela Merkel and Navalny in this hospital. Navalny had me in 2012. He had me in Berlin, all over the Berlin. All the pictures they have published on the internet on how he spent that he was on the benches and this and that he spent a great deal of time brainwashing me to join him to Berlin that once that stuff is gonna happen to him that I should just definitely join him and it's gonna be also was big lobbying from the German side to join to come to Germany and it's gonna be and we're gonna work together and this and that well when I was in Poland I met a lot of people from all over the place people met me for the first time they got in touch with reality about who I is who I was this was not empty ultra mission this was at Vladimir Putin's at Russian at Serbian disappointment real me the Ukrainian people met people from Chechnya and people from all over the world for the first time they came face to face this was not MK Ultra session this was a real time and they have gone uh, they have seen that I have gone all the way to literally crippling myself uh, to share good experience with them at work to share destiny with them that I did not caught cut any kind of corners like a politician look the easy way out or something like this like put in like this politicians do nothing but lying they came face to face and they got the taste about me they were able to create themselves impression about me who exactly I was what exactly I was everything now that Polsky Duda and Morawiecki dreamed about also through MK Ultra, how I'm gonna literally run they had a scenario how they gonna tear me everything apart I'm gonna run from the center of the Poland walk they told me you're gonna walk from Lodz from center of the Poland all the way to Germany that's how bad it's gonna be that's how bad for you it's gonna be it must have been a shocker for them that I felt really good around the people in Poland I made friends People came to rescue oftentimes whenever they could they did so also in the Czech Republic with exception of the people that were completely bought purchased by politicians if it was a politician like this Czech politician over there or somebody like Duda or somebody like that from Poland 
then it meant trouble. But if it was a people that it didn't really matter to me whether these people would like me or they would dislike me or it was all kinds of people that were really angry at me uh, during MK Ultra, but when they saw me in real time they were so happy to see me. It was a completely opposite of the picture. That's the kind of people that count to me because they're just real people, okay? Um, the first thing was exactly what Navalny's job was to basically get me to Germany from Slovenia did not come through the second thing was that much about Navalny and Putin the second thing was Navalny was rejected from my side you can go through my side and you can see you can read the messages what I wrote about and the stuff I'm talking to you about right now I don't even I didn't even mention anywhere but it's interesting, right, how he mentioned that, that they psychologically are going to evaluate, they, uh, that they evaluate people like this. It's also something I know, too, a little about that stuff. What exactly, why exactly Navalny was and who Navalny was. Then he would return back from this hospital where they had me. And they make sure that it was really, really colorful. You could actually see him on a, on a stairs. You could see him in the areas that if I would be asked questions to identify and so on. You could see him in areas like this that what do you have left when they take the photos of everything? But I'm sure that there would be still something at least they wouldn't be. Or for this guy, Navalny, this is like a very, very meticulous investigator, very, very meticulous cover-up boy for... Um, for the Russian third option. He would return back to the Russia, be trialed literally in a street and sentenced through the system that it was where MKUltra also took place, where I did not only recognize buildings, where over the course of the time they changed certain instructions, uh, structures, made improvements, improvements, but I also kept the personnel that worked a while ago, just as I explained, in some cases we would go even back to 2000 and 2003, so what the hell, do you know what I'm talking about? This thing was not even planned in 2012. I'm talking about the trial of Navalny, Alexei Navalny. This shit was already planned on way well ahead of time. Ha ha. If I was able to see the employees that go back to 2002, and maybe even earlier time, maybe even 2000, that means that they had in plan something else already way, way back in time. That this was, all this picture, the way they created, it was already done in a such a way. And I discussed this stuff, why, at the end of this video. This was not a coincidence that they would want me to remember these people. They would want me to remember um, how the buildings changed. That I would have a proof that I was there and this and that. You know, this is not a coincidence, that kind of stuff. Yeah, Navalny insisted me, complete this. And if you're not going to complete this project by the time I'm out, um, you are never going to be able to get involved in any of it. You're never going to get anything your way anymore. It's going to be finished for you. You're going to be done for good. Complete this project if you're not going to complete one. Uh, you know, as if he would want some information for me that he otherwise would not have capacity to obtain. In a way which I would actually support. But there is something dirty about it. And that's the stuff I discuss at the end of the video that angers me. Because that kind of stuff doesn't bother me. I don't mind to help somebody who's trying to do an honest job. But there is something else to all about this stuff. The stuff that I already have spoken to you about Navalny right now, that's already very shady stuff. That's already stuff that throws a real ugly shadow on Alexei Navalny. That they were trying to get with the German government uh trick me to the trip to the germany at 1000 and 
many than one way. Angela Merkel that I'm going to work with the German government together, that we're going to end this and that. It just didn't come this way. I did discuss a gentleman by the name, by the name David Chauvin. You can see in um, 0521, in a fifth minute and 21 second, you can see that. Uh, in a 10 second of this video, actually in a second minute and 40 second of this video, you can hear Navalny talk about the biggest corruption that took place within the last 15 years. Okay, all right, let it be. Um, that's supposedly what he means by this palace, right? It, it, he says it's a billion dollar that was wasted. Uh, I must say that um, I am very, very opinionated when he says this. There were other structures that would take renovation in between. Um, one of the structures was Medvedev's dacha the villa a property north of Moscow um, I don't even know if I want to go there but look this location here it's called Yaroslav this is just north a little bit east of Moscow right I was driving to this location already sometimes in 98 97 was the first time 98 I would go with the French people here uh, and they really really enjoy this place along the Volga River because the Volga River here is so is still so clean it's full of this crystal clear clean lakes and so not too far from here uh somehow because of this house right here novo mesto vladimir putin medvedev and lavrov got an idea that it would be good for the russia to have like um their own place that would be like actually it's right here this 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 place here there would be like along the river, like a waterfront property where you would eventually have like um, everything, you know, with a satellite modernized uh, property that you could, from where you could easily uh, communicate and where you would accommodate foreign politicians, business people and so on. And where you would give them the overview of the Russia so they would invest in Russia and stuff like this. This, this came to life earlier than what... Um, Medvedev invested like almost, I don't know what they say, 300 to 350 million pounds. That's considerable money too. That's like half a billion dollar right there too. Okay, so yeah, half a billion, a uh, billion dollar, that probably is the biggest corruption ever. Um, within the last 15 years, at least for a single project it is. Um, but when it comes to Putin, when it comes to this mafia state people, it was all kinds of shady dealings that would appear uh, all over the place. Another place that we would go already to visit since 96, that we would start to visit is right here. We see this Viborg here. This place here, this is another location we would go. This this actually belonged to Atsar. It's like in some kind of island property Navalny also discussed. Look, I don't want to uh, discuss this kind of stuff. It's actually... I did have before in the map. No, I don't. So it doesn't matter. But this is this is in this area here that you see. Um, the Borsky Zaliv, whatever this is. In this area here. Let me see. To summarize this whole thing about Vladimir Putin's idea about his Grand Palace. It started eventually with this property here. This property here, 95, this is a waterfront property. It started with George Bush, with idea about the ranch, having your ranch, having big, huge. 
it started with Putin being around people that yeah royalties he visits Buckingham Palace he visited this European royals and all this kind of stuff started to form in his set first with Medvedev is uh, if you want to call this Dacia or whatever it was he rationalized this to the Russian state as something very much needed so he can accommodate foreign politicians business people and through that tra 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 all through that was done mostly for their private uh, settings luxury and so on but uh, till it magnified into something completely different now the location itself this location here Sochi this location itself near Sochi just about 100 kilometers away from Sochi yeah it's just about 100 kilometers from Sochi this Sochi is where Olympic Games were held in 2014 here you have a map you can compare this about hundred something kilometers is where the Putin had his palace and this is a Sochi here grew in a Putin's idea already started to grow in the Putin's idea already in 1995 you know? and sometimes in 1995-1996 we would travel a lot here and say we I have to mention State of the Israel, I have to mention Netanyahu. They love this place here, this place along the Black Sea. They love this place. This is a very, very good climate, very, very fine place with a lot of nice people. It's a very beautiful place. And it was exactly that kind of stuff that grew more and more ripe and Putin's idea who sometimes I think probably it was must have been sometimes like in 98 probably something like this smelled not too far from here a ranch a some kind of ranch somewhere in a vicinity here he got some kind of ranch and it's not the ranch that um, It's not a ranch that uh, Navalny mentions, you know. Uh, it's not. It's not that ranch. It's not. It's not the wine yard that says it's about uh, ten kilometer uh, from this dodge. It is a wine yard, a special kind of wine yard where uh, Putin would go. You know, if I go here uh, and basically. you can see this wine yard right here this is not the wine yard he is talking about there was another um, between the Sochi and the location did you see there was another two three locations uh, however it was coming closer and closer and closer to this cape where he finally decided he's gonna put his palace but this ranch was about maybe just like maybe I don't know 20 30 minutes but it was like inside it was not toward the coast it was away from the coast uh, like a little palace that a ranch that it would become very very attractive to him and that was that was actually what along this place here that that let me see and maybe it was one hour what was was it one hour 18 minutes that finally sealed the whole thing about putting deciding to put this place down here okay so if you were to test me out i'm gonna tell you that the place that that so-called vineyard is about 10 kilometers away from his big palace that's already something that we would visit from sometimes like 98 something like this and it was just a huge upgrades the property have gone through 
that's already something I, I can give you like a background of how that place this winery was uh, upgraded over time right so that if you would go and doubt me about it I'm gonna explain to you how the Putin actually even got into this area so that's already the kind of stuff that any kind of suspicion you would have about me um, that would already go downhill I am just trying to find this but I don't know um, is it here Uh, this is along like a, ri a little river, whatever it is, and it's a vineyard, winery, 10 kilometers away from this Putin is property. So when you go over this movie, just keep in mind that I told you so. That's all there is to it. This is how Putin smelled this place. This is how he got his people that would go into the area and they would start to waste their time. This is what Putin got paid for, basically, to drive around and smell a good park prospect, a good property for himself, where he would throw the money on a table through his cronies and do whatever the hell he wants to do. This guy was like a Tsar already in 1995. This is how the Putin got into the area. But it all started through the Sochi, through the city Sochi. In the city Sochi, I can give you quite a few things, definitely can prove my knowledge from the past about being there. I know the city Sochi, and there's a lot of people from city Sochi, I'm not gonna say that everybody, but hell yeah, a lot of people knows me in city of the Sochi. I'm just waiting for this vineyard because, yeah, you'll get to see one, hopefully, here. About this vineyard, yeah. yeah. Okay, it's here. This is the one. So I was looking at the very wrong place. No, there you go. You had Donald Trump here, you had Eric Trump here, you had Junior. They would come here, they would have a good time, drink, drunk. This this is what it this is the way it was, you see? This. And then it all turned into idea about the grandeur, about the, the palace, because somebody wanted more and more and more and more. And so what I want to do now, I want to go back and I want to give you some more idea about six seconds of the video, Navalny was already in Germany. Navalny was already in Germany inside of this hospital and with the Merkel and Navalny and myself, they had me. And they brainwashed me on how I have to come to Germany, to Navalny, that when I see him over there and this and that. And through the mainstream media, they photographed exactly what I was told to memorize, anywhere from the benches in Berlin, anywhere from the shirt he used during MK Ultra 2, anywhere from the stairways inside of the hospital, all the sites that they brainwash me on how I have to remember this, you will remember that, and you will remember that, uh, that this is going to be the end for him, that he's going to be thrown out of the out of the Russia like this, and then he and I were going to work, we're going to fight the Putin from European Union uh, to Russia, and this and that. Uh, something. Uh, that already I realized in Poland, Andrzej Duda wanted me to turn into. Um, in his madness, Morawiecki, Kaczynski suggested that I'm gonna actually even walk from the center of the Poland, from the Lodz, all broken, 
back to Germany across the border with everything broken and spine and I don't know what um, that's how I will run to Germany this is how they're gonna do it with me contrary to his bullshit he alone admits that services KGB FSB services in Russia Department for Psychological Evaluation they rate people accordingly to their views uh, will where to face with reckon with consequences uh, of or basically staying out basically are portrayed as they fear to return back uh, to the Russia and this and that where they could possibly face uh, legal consequences and so on I have to tell you that entire apparatus that Navalny suggested it's going to be the case it wasn't only Navalny, it also was the Putin Putin suggested that there will be nothing I will be able to do he read me, they read me they had this Maria Sakharova, they have all these people, they insisted me on how he's going to be sentenced here, then it's going to be this, then it's going to be that, it's with like some, you would go through assembly line, and it would tell me this is going to happen then, this is going to happen then, now he will be nothing able to do, and this and that. And at the same time, you would have Navalny suggesting other stuff, a real Shizoya, a real shizoya that would totally confuse you, that you would not know what to think about at all. But as we go along this video, you understand that the two of these people eventually are lawyers by profession, and if Navalny had an option to be a Putin, he could well be a Putin, and it could have happened as well as mine exactly the same with Putin, who could easily also find himself in Navalny's shoes. They bo both work for the Russian state. It came to me very, very evident throughout the dealings that Vladimir Putin too was controlled by the Russian state. There were two people that controlled him too. It was very, as I go along this video, I will give you a few examples that I realized that he too was like a little pawn, like a little clown on a chessboard, just like Navalny. They're just people that give impression, the vision that appeals to the Russian state at the time as the most, um, you know, exis existential when never certain it depends on the type of the clientele that is involved and the type of the clientele that was involved in this case they catered with someone like Vladimir Putin basically but they always kept as a reserve an option like Navalny they orchestrated entire trial they orchestrated, they basically rehearsed with what you read in the news, in the media. It was nothing else than a rehearsal of what already took God knows how many times before. They thought over and over and over how they going to orchestrate. Further, it wasn't the Putin, it wasn't Navalny that disclosed me. In 2012, remind me of where is going to be trial or what the trial is going to be Navalny bitch me that if you're not gonna um, if you're not gonna complete this by the time I am released and this and that don't even meddle in it any, anymore because if you will they will see from the West that you're creating a problem they will get you removed you will be destroyed definitely you will be destroyed those are actually instructions literally from Navalny to me it was only from the mainstream media from the West However, Navalny at all costs wanted me to complete this project. It was other politicians also that wanted me. They were updating me with the situation from the West and so on and so forth. Russian state, going back all the way to 2000, had me inside of the streets where a trial was held. 
get me meet people, employees, personally, so that I can go today and tell you which, who worked back then, which one do I remember, which one I don't, what exactly changed, what exactly have they gone, and Oh, uh, I it doesn't get to me. Obnova, um, upgrade, uh, remodeled. They have remodeled the structures, the buildings, the entries, so that I can have a proof. If somebody asks me, the same things I have done for other areas, whether I was there, whether I'm talking the truth or not. So it wasn't Navalny, it wasn't Putin. It was somebody that operates with these clones that wanted me to have certain vision, that basically wanted me to see the certain way. It's that somebody that angered me tremendously. And that's why it's this movie. In through entire movie, let me demonstrate to you. Through his entire movie, through 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 from beginning. You see this man here? This is the guy I was talking about. This is the guy that was here in this place. Listen, I literally remember how he's inside, how you get inside of this room. Navalny This guy here was involved in MK Ultra. This is an engineer actually By profession I can tell you the whole thing about this guy. I would point out quite a few things about him too No written I'm just trying to demonstrated the degree how far this this have gone this this madness and later on I'm gonna disclose you more stuff about it because it's so much to talk about this guy here was involved in it this guy that I'm gonna demonstrate to you about to demonstrate you now this guy totally this was very very unpleasant once I saw this stuff this it made me feel not good when I saw this guy. Um, they say it's a psychologist. He was a psychologist. He's a psychologist, but he's like a police officer rank. Something like uh, Navalny himself. But they actually put him, got him beaten up through his gang, through his criminals, because he was on the way. He protested against this construction. He was getting them on a way. Uh, eventually, he ended up in a hospital. Whatever the deal was with this guy. He was involved in MK Ultra too. Already, that kind of stuff, that's very, very, very negative for... Um, Yeah, I cannot see it, but there is a guy that is all beaten up, beaten up to the pulp, and is lying in a hospital. This is the guy also was involved. Everything else that you see was involved. The buildings, the properties, the places, and much, much, much more was involved. In a little bit, and I will explain to you everything, why, how, and so on, so that you understand why all this. It might even sound like kind of incredible, but it eventually does make sense why, how, everything can be well rationalized, everything can be well explained. I'm not going to find him, who cares right now.
this I already have stated. Corruption, the biggest one. Yeah, and I think Navalny did a really good job, but why this movie? Well, the main portion, the main thing about this is the real corruption. The main, the main idea about is for me to present the real issue, how Putin became Putin. How, in other words, Putin became wealthy. How it all started. A little bit I did explain to you how it all started. It started with Piotr Corbin, uh, which, like a usual gangster type of attitude, hope you never had opportunity to meet any of them, but they would present you with an offer. They would tell you, we're going to protect you for so much and so much, you're going to pay every month. You don't actually have a choice, the only choice you have maybe is to go away. And even that's questionable, where you're presented with that kind of offer. Um, once you start paying them, uh, the price goes up. Whether you like it or not, you have to come up with that payment. And if you don't, you, know, you can end up somewhere in a body bag or something like that. It was the same thing here. It, it was good, but it was never enough for these people. And so sometimes in like, more likely in 98, not even 99, and if it was in 99, it was like in really, really, really early, early, early 99, probably was like toward the end of the 1998, Vladimir Putin got first cash donation, cash payment, cash deposit on his personal account in Switzerland. And this was for about at least a quarter of either billion uh, dollars, I don't know what the currency was, euros, whatever it was, it was a quarter of billion. It was really good, really, really good. A Buckingham Palace insisted me that they were very, very unhappy with Vladimir Putin. They were very, very unhappy because, well, the Slovenian politicians, it was a panic here. I was told that actually they don't even know whom to put anymore as a president, whom to put as a prime minister. They are so afraid. Whether that's true or that's not true, I'll leave that up to you. I don't know. I know what I would do. But here in Slovenia there was a corruption within the entire political system. Here it was a big corruption that went on too. People got poisoned, people got killed, left and right. And when Buckingham Palace saw this this people spitting their through the colon cancer, their guts, they wanted to slow down this stuff. For this this is what they insisted me. Um They wanted to satisfy him, they wanted to make a deal with him, this is what I was told. And so this is how a quarter of a billion dollar at least was deposited to a gang from Moscow on their account, to the Switzerland. Something that, um, it was really, really, really good for like a short period of time, but in 1999, Putin would return and um, I know it was something that something happened and then he would return back and then he would be in a very very bad mood. Um, not that he would be in a bad mood but he would suggest that I that he's not going to be able to convince them anymore to me knowing that they listen that they listen one or the other. This is so crazy. Um, they don't even talk like person to person. They almost talk like they wish to one another through the inner rooms that they know the other side listens. And they then they coordinate one another and talk and see and views and coordinate how. And it's a very profound way of the way they negotiate these things. The whole day, the whole day, he said, most likely he's going to fall into the water. 
you know, what's got this have to do with it was that the Bill Clinton stopped the war in the Balkans because that's what's a Russian mercenaries. This was not anymore this poisoning little stuff and that kind of stuff that would go on that Russians would do. Also in Croatia, whenever they would be meeting diplomats, it would be like Man, it was like an epidemic of the colon cancer. The people would develop colon cancer out of nowhere. It was like the thing. The Russians would literally send the country completely neutral, the country, the Slavic, the biggest Slavic country, the mother Russia equal for everybody. That's how we were thought in the school. The Slavic, the biggest Slavic country always just for everybody, a mother Russia, would send the mercenaries into the Chetnik, into the Serbian Chetnik military with idea to slaughter Bosnian and Croatian population, literally. They sent them along with the Serbian Chetniks on the front line to kill, to slaughter. They started to directly engage in war, well-trained mercenaries, uh, fighting along the Serbs on a front line against the small Croatia, against the small Bosnia. This became insane. And that's when Bill Clinton dispatched bombers to stop this madness. And they bombed Serbia and Mr. Milosevic did not have um, an option other than to sign truce. The Serbian government had to stop it. The war um, genocide committed against Bosnian people and Kosovo Albanian people and Croat people was this this stuff was so outrageous entire international society was up. Russia had nothing to get involved, to get do anything about stuff like that. They were completely outdated. They had nothing actually to go against any of that stuff. That was a capitulation big time, a moral defeat too uh, that led into anger, frustration on the Russian side, and they were going to quit from some kind of arrangement they had made with the West. There was a big, big, big ass arrangement they had made in a we with the West. Whatever they had made, this arrangement was already made in '98. Definitely was, and they were working toward that. It wasn't much after that after they they stopped this war they would again get together and Vladimir Putin and I think it was on our trip upon our return from Canada from Nova Scotia and it was probably in 99 then received another payment which he never should have had um, Uh, it's it's actually it's like this he received another payment through the Switzerland maybe for another quarter of a billion dollars and that must have happened then maybe maybe so even in a 99 so the contract would go on It must have been something like this. Either it was a 99 or maybe even 2000. It might have been, if it was for a quarter of the million, then it was another payment that he received for a half a billion. They might have been three payments, cash deposits. This is a question to debate, though. But it's like this. There was a trip, either in 99 or in 2000, to Nova Scotia, a total misery would come back to Slovenia. My family went, father went. Um, Whatever the hell I would go in Nova Scotia to interact with the people, the whole Nova Scotia was involved in MKUltra. That's a Canada. I would have these people from KGB, these people, Putin and so on, I refused to interact with. Once I was in Canada, I didn't want to have absolutely nothing to do with it. 
I was like, go the F away. We don't know each other. This is the stuff that this Putin so bad and his people that it was like a madness already on the plane. They, they couldn't stand. They started to threaten. And my father and everybody else from Slovenia, that this is fucking madness. Come here. Sit down in the kitchen. It was screaming. Separate me from family. Sit here. Sit do. Do this. You this. You that. You I don't know what you. You're not going to make it. You this. You have. Who do you think is going to save you? Give names. Give names. And whichever name I would give out. Because I would never bend. Eventually they screw these people up. Eventually they would invite them and they would poison them. According to the math that I stated right now, uh, the trip to, to Canada might have well happened in 2000. And that's actually when Buckingham Palace demanded somebody else, no longer Vladimir Putin, that they don't want Vladimir Putin no more. That's now what was telegraphed to the Moscow that it's over. They don't want to see him on a picture anymore because it was more people that suffered. He screwed up more people. The violence did not stop. All these deposits, cash, whatever, it was not enough. This, you have no idea. This, this is like never enough. Like I said earlier, this you can't satisfy. And then somehow that they did make an arrangement that he's going to stop doing that kind of stuff. Eventually it was something like that this is the, the last chance that he's going to get. And they presented me also from their side the issue that if they don't get the money so much and so much that they're not going to see him anymore. And so that's the stuff that happened in 2000. So that might actually be the third payment. And that one was for a really half a billion dollar. He eventually got that money, whichever way it was, whichever one of this side was correct. Yeah, he got his money. Uh, was it this a second payment or was this a third payment? I do not know. But this was the money that went through the Switzerland. If it was a second payment, it was a second payment. It was not the third payment. If it was the third payment, by any chance, then sometimes in 2004, as I was also taught, not to forget, and by the Buckingham Palace, And by the Angela Merkel alone, that's why I'm very suspicious. Went either through the Düsseldorf or Dortmund, Dortmund area. This, most likely even Düsseldorf, something like this. This area, here, one of the cities, I don't know which one. I am um, suspicious about this, very suspicious about it, because when I mentioned yeah, well, probably this was the fourth payment already. And this was not actually the payment. This was actually probably just an attempt uh, for me to say something so they could um, state that there never was anything with the Switzerland or something like that. It was probably a transaction. It was actually probably something that they would start trade. Might have been a crude oil, God knows. When I say stuff like this, they wouldn't limit to the Germany, which is these days like a main supporter for this uh, petroleum, Russian petroleum gas uh, to Europe. Um, you, you have people like this girl, let's say, who got involved in MK Ultra. This is a Russian. I'm not sure whether she got on a picture in Russia or she got on a picture somehow through the Switzerland. 
but she was involved in MK Ultra way toward the beginnings of it. Um, she got, I think, job as a some kind of cleaning or something in the ra in the Switzerland or something like this. It was eventually she married a billionaire, Swiss billionaire, and today she's worth about six billion. So the Vladimir Putin said the whole laundry engine throughout the Europe that included the Switzerland. She is a, you were able to see, this is, what's her name, Margarita Dreyfus, whatever. This is a Russian girl, Bogdanova, look. A beauty, a Russian beauty that, um, moved to Switzerland and became uh, just simply very wealthy. And behind her, trust me, uh, a mafia from Moscow literally washing money, doing all kinds of transactions. The stuff I have spoken about, how it all started. Literally like this. So that the fourth transaction, if it was not whatever the third thing whatever they suggested because by then Putin already had a lot of money his circle already had a lot of money produced in one of the KGB people that observed me a very violent reaction like kind of outburst like when I said when I said again so that probably was already the th fourth transaction whatever it was they suggested because I told them about, but they, you were over there, you already did that stuff. It was in my stupid head on that MTO. And when I said that, the guy was like, have you heard this? He went immediately to the other guy, the Russian guy. What did he do? Did the guy say? Took Moscow, said this and that. It was a no-no to do something without knowledge of other guys from Moscow. Hey, if you did this, it doesn't matter. Even if you were Putin, you would disappear. That's why I'm telling you, Putin was just another apparatchik in a chain of, you know, of this big, big, big gangster state, as I explained to you at the beginning. If you would play with this, and you too would disappear. You know, he is just there because they selected him uh, but it's other people behind this stuff too. He's not alone. I'm not saying that he's not the main guy or whatever it is, that he's not running this, uh, but there are people that you have no idea uh, how, you know, these things can turn so quickly like you wouldn't believe. So I think, in my personal opinion, that it was not a transaction. It's more likely the way I think about this now, it was just an attempt to confuse me. I don't think that they would go and do something like this through the German state. That's kind of stupid. There is no confidentiality when it comes to Germany. You know, the perfect country for the kind of dealings and more than just easy for them would be to go to the Switzerland. They had super powerful connections in Switzerland uh, going through these issues of let's say Margarita Dreyfus Bogdanova this girl, look at her this is what you would say as they regarded to as a classic white beauty uh, they were totally excited about it they stated me that Russians like this they would welcome them anywhere inside of the Europe, anywhere in the Western institutions, that they would completely integrate, they wouldn't have no problems with it. And as you go along the video of this thing here, Navalny talks about the beginning, the structure itself of this, the way Putin said this, uh, this net here at the beginning. You're gonna, you're gonna see that the names here, you're going to see that the names are Millers. Uh, it's the Russians that don't even look like a classic Russians. They are handpicked. I was asked actually to even evaluate as per how they look and this and that. So that Russian state would select them as representative representatives of 
Russia. That's why I'm saying that what you are experiencing right now with the Russia uh, in the world is actually a consequence, direct consequence of destabilized Russian state. It's, trust me, everybody that suffers, including the people inside of the Russia, people with the, with the, with the Asian DNA, with, you know, either that be from the side of China, Chinese, Mongolian side, or side of, um, I don't know, Turkey, that type of issues. Everybody suffers consequences because of this stuff. When state of group like Russia is destabilized, um, the whole world is paying the consequences for that. That's why I'm doing this video. If you already want to know, this is one of the reasons why. I hope I did close that issue. Well, Roman Abramovich, I did mention, I, I did mention about all that kind of stuff. Like I said, most likely in 2003, whatever that was, <laughs> it's kind of suspicious was to me, really, to begin with. It didn't make a lot of sense to me. It most likely was a trait with certain commodity, whether that be, might have been whatever it was, oil or maybe minerals or whatever it was. Going to this here, 96 Navalny, um, Davos, Switzerland, that is in Switzerland, uh, and then uh, 98 French counts and stuff like that. Uh, that actually did spike me good. Uh, that actually did motivated me really well into this video because Navalny did bullet me with this issue. He bullied me with the idea that uh, you better be careful what you're going to say, where he was, when he was, and this and that, because, you know, I documented, we documented everything, and this and that bullshit. Um, he did actually, again, a really good job, even for me, because he suggests that when supposedly he was, uh, I don't know what he said, in Cannes or in Davos or whatever with his wife, Lyudmila, she alone was somewhere in the Baltic, and uh, he was uh, in Cannes or in Davos or whatever it was. They would travel back and forth. Uh, separately, they would spend time. And they had me, they had me back and forth. I would travel with Western people from the West. I was in Israel, I was in France, I was in Switzerland. I was all over the place. Crimea was big, Belarus, Poland, Czech Republic to so-so. At the beginning, at the early beginning, Škod and all that kind of stuff, it did develop somehow some other businesses, but this is a small country. So that kind of stuff is very, very relative. Where he was, when he was, he spent a lot of time in Slovenia. Shoigu was his right hand. He would be back and forth. Do believe he had somebody as a substitute. Do believe he had somebody in Moscow to uh, to substitute him to whatever the hell he was up to. That he would they would cover his ass as per presence. He spent a lot of time here. There was all kinds of people right here in Slovenia. I alone spent a lot of time here. I seen all kinds of people here, politicians, it was all kinds of stuff that went on. At one point, it actually, they contemplated in, and they did have the helicopter that would land outside here in the field. It was like this. They contemplated on creating uh, like 
a bridge that would go straight to the factory from a Surico company. It was all kinds of stuff like, I don't know, bridge, but like uh, that you would connect. It was all kinds of stuff they contemplated and doing. It was all kinds of projects and then decided not doing this and that. It was kind of madness that, that they were doing around here. It was all kinds of stuff that went on here. The Kirka Pharmaceutical Company managed to survive thanks to this case. It was a time that this was the first company in Eastern Europe that they would have access to the modernization, to the machines, to, to the stuff that in the past they could not even dream about, something like this, that would become accessible to them. That basically was like a step so forward in light years for a company like this that actually became competitive with Western companies. And I kind of couldn't understand that when compared this with the with other companies in a, in Czech Republic and in Poland and stuff that they were they struggled. I know a little bit understand more why all that stuff. And they got certain licenses and formulas and so on they gave them so they could expand and expand and expand and expand. And through this case they assured it also, they secured markets and in Serbia and in Russia and in other parts of the world. That otherwise they would not even make it. I'm not going to say for Serbia or Russia or something like that, but they also sell in the West and so on and so forth. They got first hand to work with the biggest pharmaceutical companies, other companies worldwide, globally. That would not happen if I was not from this city, if these people, politicians, business people would not come here. It would not happen for them anything like this. Nothing would open really. The question is if the company would even exist. It probably would be taken over by some other company, pharmaceutical company, God knows what. If not, maybe even closed down because this is competitive competitive side of the world too pharmaceutical uh, stuff it's not just like that i can give you a background about remodelation of this hotel in Cannes. that about pretty much everything that navalny mentioned in the video that you get to see with your own eyes i can do that stuff I already have explained to you what brought Vladimir Putin the idea to build this palace uh, and this cape, this big ass palace, how he came there. Um, and then there is some kind of a personal stuff here that uh, drove me into uh, even more anger. You know, this this is the stuff that, that really, really, really angered me. And what angers me even more about it is that I was actually in a conflict during MK Ultra also with Navalny. Um, about the construction at the Putin's palace, what I'm going to tell you is, yeah, I was there. The main guy who was assigned to this construction was Medvedev. It started with a boom. Boom. Here's what we're going to do this and da, 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 da. And I was like, whatever they would tell me, I was like, ah, la, 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 la. Yeah, if you would tell me something, I was like a really monkey. I would make definitely sure that if something will go wrong, that you're going to dream about me. Because I made kind of a prediction that everything is going to go wrong about the ideas they had. I always had uh, explanation of why things are going to go wrong or why it's not going to work out. And somehow, some way, I don't know even why. It just did happen so. And the same shit happened with this palace. Not that I would want this. Uh, Navalny alone became excited about the prospect of this palace because of me. Uh, when Putin started this project, Navalny insisted that it's finished with Putin. He started something he can't even finish, he will never be able to finish. Um, I didn't give a shit about 
either of the two. So at my free time, whenever I have a capacity, ability, I did Putin and I did him. It was harder to do Putin than Navalny because Navalny's taste was like a regular taste, you know, like view from the economic, economical point of view. But my taste was very different. You could say that my taste was adjusted to the type of clientele I met throughout MK Ultra. And I met people from Buckingham Palace, and because of the family itself I am from, I am just from a class of the people, like a city folks, that would be like we say starting Meshani. that would be like a people from like a city people that would be from the old house that would have this habit to keep neat objects old chairs old furniture like really old to themselves and would take pride in it and they would understand what all this the meaning of the old and appreciation for that versus uh, this Russian um, Navalny's background that was more directed and this KGB people more directed toward economical um, useful uh, practical view on the things they do not have a taste for old for sophisticated old uh, they just didn't understand issues. They did not know how to separate these issues. Um, they also did not understood. They didn't have this feel for something that you could see even when you were drugged up, if it was a quality or it was not a quality. So that I found myself in early beginnings inside of this palace, walking around with Putin and his KGB people, and Medvedev and basically effing everybody in the head, telling them about shitty chairs, telling about the shitty tables, telling about cheap. They talked about how this is going to be magnificent and I don't know what, and as I would roam around, the only thing I would do is I would just take the pleasure out of maybe breaking their balls talking to me about some kind of, I don't know what, when I saw that kind of stuff in any American um, furniture store that would sell some kind of replicas of old furniture or something like that. It didn't even feel like old furniture or something like that. You know, it's just not, if you want to do something like, the guy talks about Versailles and he talks about his palaces and stuff like this. I, you know, I said to myself, you're fucking kidding me, man. You're like, you're talking to me about something that you're going to do. He talks about size of the 30 monocles, you know, the size, the size. I told him, fuck the size. You know, this isn't about the size. This is about, you know, I, I, I felt like these people had no idea about this European structures across the Europe about what exactly how they were built, the, the magnificence of these cathedrals, of these castles, and what force it took for these people, how they built this with through the stones and stuff like that. Slavery, literally. Bleeding. You can't replicate this with these modern materials that you're just going to throw a, a mountain, you're just going to go buy a mountain of these stones, basically stones, not stones, but these artificial materials, and just bricks, basically, and just go and break something big that's going to be a size of 30 times of Monaco and say that this is now even bigger and better and stuff like this. It doesn't work like this. And that's basically what they wanted to put in my head. And as much as the Navalny was against all this stuff, when I, once I started to ridicule all of this, it must have looked more realistic to him. It must have looked must have made a bigger impression, far bigger impression on him when you watch this with real eyes. It might have would have happened maybe to me too if I would have seen it with my own, you know, 
if I wasn't drugged up. But when I was drugged up, I really didn't care about. I just wanted to, you know, have it my way. And that's actually is what prompted Vladimir Putin to do completely insane stuff with the toilet and stuff like that where he would actually do such a stuff that would go insane because he figured out that it's that kind of stuff that's going to make like the biggest impression uh you know on people like berlusconi people with a lot of money that would travel there that he wanted to impress them it was exactly that kind of stuff that drove him that drove putin insane and that's also one of the things I was also again guilty of. That I drove Putin. Now the Putin is like this because of me. And I don't know what kind of stuff. I was guilty of everything you possibly can blame somebody of. I was not satisfied. And just as... I bitched them out the second year. We came with Americans sometimes. I think it was 2012, right here from Slovenia. We landed in Moscow. The first one that got me in his hands was Navalny. This was like a, some kind of CNN reporter, something like this. He got supposedly like, through the side channels that we're going on a black sea, that we're going to see this Putin's creation, this palace, whatever. Hell. Uh, and he was all excited he's going to be the one this time taking me and that, that he already arranged was it 2013 I don't know that he will be the one that he's going to take a lead that this is it that this is it and he was making an arrangement on how he's going to film all this and dra, 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 that we're going to see but I was there already and I have no idea I think this was like a sudden second year or something so probably it was 2012 and it started in 2010 it was really fast almost you would say in one year that all this grew up out of nothing that's why I said I also rated this thing as a trash with a, such a velocity you're gonna build something so big I told him this is a trash this thing this is nothing anybody can do this it, this was like a tremendous insult so I figure out that if you already watch this stuff, you're going to see that yeah, maybe I deserved a little bit to be punished from Navalny because of the stuff I did. Uh, I was drugged up, though. Maybe I did deserve it a little bit, but you're going to see that Navalny, as much as he hates this thing, he is kind of advertising this thing, like bigger than Monaco, like this, like this chair and this and this and this and this. He's talking about these chairs and this and that. They involve me in this kind of stuff. The man who designed this place, Italian, I was actually even hoping they're not going to tell that kind of stuff, whatever. All these people were involved in MK Ultra, Berlusconi, all this. As much as he hated the whole thing, once the Putin put that eagle at the gate, that was the end of it. And it was, you know, what it started with the big, with this, with this gate. Uh, one time they brought me. What year was I? Have no, excuse me. I think cool. What was it? 2006, 2008. I see this fucking gate. It looked like. Almost like in Sarajevo, in this in this American, when they brought me to this American um, fort, this this um, military facility started to build. No, I, I I didn't know where the fuck I was. Excuse me. What is this shit now? This this gate. This now through this here. Through everybody's gonna drive through here. Through this thing here. I was looking at this shit here. That the trucks are gonna drive through here. Sometimes I was, I was in doubt because the people alone, this American psychologist that would travel along this uh, Rx, this uh, Daniel Smith, he couldn't believe his fucking eyes what he was seeing. I was drugged up. I, I was. Um, 
I was like, whatever, you know, because you don't know anymore what to think. You th you you see the the things like you wouldn't believe, and you drugged up anyways. And you know, in, in a way, it's better you don't even think about shit. You know, maybe it's gonna go away somehow, like a bad dream when you wake up and it's gone, before you wake up, whatever. This shit didn't go away. And that's how it all started with that fucking gate with this and then they started to upgrade and i can give you the whole background on how what the progress went along how this thing and it's like again my bitching would bring them a bad luck or something like that because navalny says that they they suffered a tremendous mob that they had to remove all the marble whatever they did i bitch them about this i i told them that you're bidding your shit. You don't even have the money for the marble, for all kinds of stuff like that. And you, you're gonna do this, and it's fast. And man, it almost like I would call some kind of a force upon them that would descend down and would completely devastate this palace. Before you know, the rest of it you can see literally from Navalny's movie. And again, another prediction that I did. It's it it looked like it is it is it made another. Um, it came down like a thunder on this whole thing. Not that I would want it to predict. Not that I would. That this is what I would want to happen. Um, I was just person like this under MK Ultra. That I was just really not happy for many many reasons. Of which main reason was a woman. Women were the main reason. yeah when recording this stuff and i'm not doing this one for the first time i did other recordings today i was really really upset about navalny because of because because of that kind of stuff that that he started to brag about uh about this size of this palace and stuff like that but then he told me that he's going to also mention something like that there is 20 million he called them a beggars, these poor Russian people that live on the edge of the society. They really do, from month to month, it's really a difficult situation for them. Um, I have gone through the stages, to be honest with you, when recording this video, I, I recorded one several times. I, I, especially because of Vladimir Putin's latest illusion on Biden I have totally lost it so the last one was his copy of Billion Applausic Billion Applausic is a lady from Bosnia and Herzegovina a Serbian in a same category in the same rank convicted war criminal and if you if you want to call this a lady a convicted war criminal lady is is Slobodan Milosevic is his voice of Shechel Radovan Karadzic Radovan Karadzic was a Serbian psychiatrist a war criminal accused of genocide, extermination of Bosnian Croat people who was assigned to me once I was brought from United States of America as a personal case manager. This Serb would be a psychiatrist designated for my whereabouts whenever I was brought. He was the one who built a dossier on me for the Serbian state whenever I was brought to Serbia. Mrs. Birna Plausic, as she stated, a biologist, was the one who provided a moral, or maybe you want theoretical part for the sake of extermination of the Bosnian, of the Croat people. Her problem, as she states alone, with the Bosnian people are genetic uh, dysfunction, it's genetic dysfunctionality 
these are people who embraced Islam due to deformed genetical material just you can see it yourself in front of you it claims that due to this embracement of Islam each successive generation it since it becomes concentrated it gets worse and worse it simply expresses itself and dictate their style in thinking which is rooted in the genes and through centuries the genes degraded further <laughs> uh, this would be almost insane if you would miss the point that it was people like this that hospitalized me that sent me in Slovenia inside of the mental hospital it it would be like already enough if you would not take in account what I just stated and so when I heard what I was reminded prior to the video Vladimir Putin have used to respond to Joe Biden's accusation you could say indirect accusation um, because the only thing from Biden was he gave confirmation to a question uh, about what he thinks if he thinks that Vladimir Putin is a killer so this is like a really really mild way to say to express your opinion is we give an affirmative answer to it um, that sometimes in the future I will face personally this kind of dilemma that he will be talking about what Mrs. Biljana Plausic was brainwashing me as deformed genetical material. This is what I was brought from the US by Donald Trump to meet in Serbia. So let's see this epic answer from letter Vlad. <laughs> You can see we know each other um, personally. He makes a gesture like would have a mercy on Biden, basically. Like feel sorry for him. What would I suggest him? What would I answer him on his? Then it's kind of pathetic. I would. Uses the same kind of answer with which he treats his fellow mafia people in Russia. He, he, he answers with stay healthy. He does this before he sends them into a casket every one of them this is like a threat this is like a mafia gangster way to, to say someone watch out is well yeah is is touching Biden's health if I would ever get so far peril to that because he used his news in many different issues of many different people I too was told that this is gonna be the case that he does that before he goes on a genetical he goes on a cultural he touches a cultural issues Uh, 
у нас другой генетический. We are different. We are genetically different. И культурно нравственный код. Uh, he's talking about the cultural, that they have a code in Russia, they have a cultural, they have a moral code, and they are genetically different. Well, Mr. Putin, not only different from Joe Biden, myself too, um, when I say myself, I'm going to put it this way. Different from myself, I was eventually acknowledged as a freak. I was eventually acknowledged as irregular, as unusual, as non-typical Slovenian native by the guy from Ljubljana, by the Borat Paha. I was actually acknowledged as a freak, as a freak. He called me a freak. Deformed. Genetical material, this is what they would refer to me all the time here in Slovenia. It wasn't only Bilim Aplausic down in Serbia. It was people here in Ljubljana that referred to me as unfit genetically, as different, as not acceptable really. And thought that because of this, the only way out for me would be eventually to marry somebody intermarry with somebody from Serbia from Russia this was one of the things I have to accent the madness did not stop with Biden the madness already touched someone else that's genetically deformed Barack Obama in a most pitiful disgusting way still comparing him to the pigeon not only the pigeon that does a mess on a chessboard but literally pigeon in real life you can see Vladimir Putin walking next to his priest acknowledging just a pigeon on the site, it's also one of the things he told me the case is gonna be. Then, with this banana and with all kinds of other issues and so on and so forth. They are genetically different people. They are culturally rich people. You can see the guy here with a knife in his mouth. That's what they embrace. Uh, but they are extremely, extremely, extremely sensitive. They are extremely, extremely sensitive to the issue called mentality. God forbid I was told I ever would use the word mentality. Mentality. You know, mentality, like mentality. That's the stuff that is maybe worse than than any other word to Vladimir Putin who eventually it appears praises Russia I want you to see this whole video here he says whatever is going to be of interest to us and whatever is going to be profitable to us okay okay I clicked the wrong page here it says 99 Russian bombing led to Putin's rise to power I'm just saying this because he mentioned the interests he mentioned genetic he mentioned cultural he mentioned moral this is the stuff that took place in Moscow, make no mistake, what you see right here. And I want to touch for the last, the last issue of Vladimir Putin is this one here. Чем мы являемся, по сути. 
И вот, вы знаете, я вспоминаю, в детстве мы во дворе, когда спорили друг с другом, мы говорили так. Кто как обзывается, тот так и называется. It takes one to know one. You see? I think I am just gonna end here because I think that this man who became not only that he knows Joe Biden but he knows this man right here sometimes since 95-96 this is a Serbian Chetnik Alexander Vucic is a president just like Vladimir Putin is and his mentors were people like Slobodan Milosevic are basically convicted war criminals Vojslav Šešel you can also see him on a picture posing with these people with a war with a convicted war criminals with the people who exterminated with insane people I think I'm not sure because Vladimir Putin is mentally ill person Vladimir Putin is a pathological liar this is the type of mentality you know mentality um, he is like born to be a gangster a born to be a mobster a mafia a criminal it's the type of mentality we are talking about and I'm not sure whether he became even more crazy when he traveled to Serbia because one deed led into another uh, that finally stopped shortly with what Clinton took uh, in hands when bombardment started in Serbia in 99 if he wouldn't have done that there wouldn't be today no Bosnian no Croat no Slovenian people as a human beings, not nations. Forget about nations. We, us, we would cease to exist. Because we have seen this throughout the Russian history time and again. It's called a mentality. It takes one to know one. Yeah, he is absolutely correct about it. I don't actually have anything else I would say to this. I did cover everything I wanted to cover about this stuff. Basically, whatever was written here, I did mainly. Um, a little replica here to. Um, Alexei Navalny to this third Russian state option a little replica I will add to all this I'm gonna put it this way he touched also Ludmila Putinova he touched you know, a women issue. He touched issue of Alina Kabaeva. He touched he touched Krivonok daughter and stuff like this. And Mama Krivonok and so on. And I know that Navalny is a Russian, a proud Russian he is. I know that. Um, but he's going to have to forgive me about this. I do have to touch this subject of mentality again. Because he's not being honest. A Putin's mentality issues. And yeah, the problem is that he covers this third option covers too much shit that Russian state produced it's they're not only parallel it doesn't run only parallel with the West with eliminate with the pizza they created that you're gonna consume that I'm gonna consume and go along with 
disregarding my own issues in this case but this third option covers up too much for Vladimir Putin this third option reveals something about Vladimir Putin's mental illness but it tells nothing about a Krivonok that the Krivonok was the one that was used oftentimes by the Vladimir Putin before he would wish his comrades, mafia options a good health basically before he would send them to crypts before he was destined them to caskets buried them they oftentimes went through the palace where Mrs. Krivonok worked and she was the one who buried quite a few got buried quite a few she poisoned quite a few quite a few of these people spilled their guts off I know because I know her since I don't know maybe 1996 not 95 but 96 97 for sure I know a whole lot about her I know a whole lot about her daughter her daughter got to know me already um, her boyfriend got to know me therefore daughter's boyfriend and when it comes to women I believe I have seen one single mom here in city of the novel Mesto. I think that might be one of the children of Vladimir Putin I did met two ladies in Ukraine I think that Vladimir Putin excuse me not in Ukraine but in Belarus I think he's got children also in Belarus I think this man impregnated so many ladies all over the place which I'm not going to say that he's not even taken care of uh, but do believe that some he might in a way at least opening the connections in others due to his mentality due to his de degenerated genetics this degenerated genetical structure that he has he does not even take here um, so that when he comes to Navalny because you know I don't know anybody anything and I don't know oh, Russian state not even the third option or West for that matter anything I'm gonna leave it up to you whichever way you want to see it as for myself I will continue to concentrate on my own issues will go about collecting more proofs and uh, applying for more jobs because I got stuff to do like I said uh, thanks for watching this video I hope I did provided you with some valuable information that otherwise you would never get to know you would never get to know the truth I know it's already clouded um, out there they always do that before the real truth comes out I see Mr. Abramovich, I see that they listen what I do here. Yeah, they don't watch 100%, they listen. Uh, decided eventually to even sue somebody out there uh, because of uh, claimed affiliation of him to Vladimir Putin. This was like the latest news I see that came out like 20 hours ago, something like that. And this is the video I just started on what was March the 21st March the 21st March the 22nd so that's 20 hours ago um, that would pop be basically exactly again it would totally fit into that category of I'm not bothered by the fact that there were people here prior to arrival of Slavic people with whom we intermixed I am not bothered with this in any way I like it this way I don't even have a problem with my DNA when I think about that we as a small nation did not have a capacity ability to withstand occupation which was taken for many centuries of this little country of this little nation
this country was occupied for many centuries and by Italians and by Hungarians and of course by the Germans um, that I would take a stand against myself against uh, my people people the why we look as per how we look something that certain people even not only convicted were criminals not only convicted were criminals but also the were criminals that are yet to be convicted the were criminals that are still out there and are still not convicted so therefore unconvicted criminals have problem with and i'm not only thinking about here vladimir putin and alexander vucic i'm talking about people we have right here in slovenia i'm talking about borat power type of people too does not even cross my mind like i said i am just happy the way i am the way our people look like i like it i like myself i like the way my people look like uh the only thing for me left to do is to wish convicted and those that are waiting to be convicted well have a good health zdravia I don't know about the DNA, but I can tell you 100% out of own experience, we Slovenians do have far more in common with Chinese than when, or I should say, when compared to Russians. So this is something I would also advise Wes to consider. In the summer of 1999, the approval rating of former President Yeltsin was 2%. There appeared to be no chance whatever that uh, Putin, who was designated by Yeltsin as his successor, could possibly become the next Russian president. The apartment bombings changed everything. It was said after those buildings went up that now we're living in a completely different country. Putin came forward uh, as the savior of the country. He was put in charge of a war in Chechnya. Uh, the bombings were blamed on Chechens without any, any evidence whatsoever. And the, as a result of the successful prosecution of that war, against all odds, he was elected the next Russian president. The apartment bombings appear to be the keystone of, of a plot uh, to confuse Russian public opinion, to create terror, to distract uh, the Russian public, to redirect their anger away from the corruption that had flourished under Yeltsin and uh, toward the Chechens who had had for a number of years a semi-independent government in Chechnya and in that way create the conditions for the Russian people to vote in what they absolutely consciously did not want, which was a successor to Yeltsin who would protect Yeltsin. There was an enormous amount of material in the Russian newspaper Novaya Gazeta, uh, which pointed to the possibility and in fact the likelihood that the authorities themselves blew up those buildings. At the same time, a fifth bomb was discovered in the basement of an apartment building in Ryazan, which is a city southeast of Moscow. And I went to Ryazan uh, after the bomb was discovered and defused to talk to local residents. And it was clear from those conversations that what took place was a genuine attempt to blow up a fifth building. The authorities said that this was only a training exercise, but it was nothing of the kind. And what was most important was that three persons were arrested for putting a bomb in a building in Ryazan. They turned out to be not Chechens, not terrorists in the usual sense, but rather agents of the Federal Security uh, Service, which is the FSB. 
I, I asked for documents from the CIA, from the FBI, uh, from the Directorate of National Intelligence, from the State Department. I got very, very little that was of any use, but I did get a few documents from the State Department, which indicated that their sources of information were telling them that the apartment bombings were extremely suspicious. You had to be deaf, dumb, and blind not to see what was going on. And in particular, you had to be willfully ignorant if you didn't see the implications of the Riazan inc incident in which three FSB agents were arrested for putting a fifth bomb in a building. Even though the bomb didn't go off, it was a live bomb. What was it doing in the basement of an apartment building?